welcome to the Live from the Hive pre-match show. The Bees are back in Vanarama National League action as we host Kings Lynn Town at the Hive London, looking to bounce back from Saturday's defeat to Bromley. Coming up in the preview show, we'll have interviews with young goalkeeper Eamon Azaz, we'll catch up with new man Anthony Wordsworth, and we'll get to know a little bit more about our new goalkeeping coach, Reese Evans. There'll also be highlights from our FA Cup triumph over Burton Albion and the key moments from our win over Weymouth. There's plenty to come, so sit back and get in the mood for this evening's match. <laughs> In the build-up to our previously postponed Vanarama National League fixture with Hartlepool United, we caught up with young goalkeeper Eamon Azaz after he recently made his Barnet FC debut in the Emirates FA Cup tie against Leyston. He then backed that up with a clean sheet in his league debut against Wrexham. We spoke to him to see how he felt after making his Barnet FC debut. It's been a crazy few days for you personally. You've made your league debut on Tuesday against Wrexham and you made your debut against Leyston last yeah. weekend. Just how much have you enjoyed being involved with the first team? Yeah, I think it's been good, especially last year. I spent a bit of time on the bench and everything. So it's good like watching it and that. But now being a part of it feels extra special as well. So I've waited quite a bit of time for it, so it's been good. It came in some unfortunate circumstances with plenty of the first team players coming down with, with the virus. But yeah. How much have you enjoyed taking that opportunity, particularly in that first game against Leyston, which was a real difficult experience for any goalkeeper in that kind of circumstance with the conditions and the fans, etc.? Yeah. I think m more so it was just enjoyment because um, just playing, finally putting on the Barnet shirt and everything, which was good. Always a proud moment and stuff for me and my family. Um, yeah, I think also with a lot of the players out and stuff, I think it shows how much strength we have in the squad as well. So the players are not playing every week and that. They step really stepped up against Leyston and Wrexham as well. So it was really good. When you walked out against Leicester, as you said, it, that must have been a really proud moment. And a moment you've had to wait quite patiently for with, when you look at the stand of goalkeeper in having Scott as the number one. Yeah. yeah, massively, I think. Scott, even the way he trains every day and everything, it's unreal. Off the pitch as well. I don't think people understand how much of a character he is in the change room sometimes. I think, especially with the fans, it's difficult to see. Like, you just see him on the pitch and stuff. But even in the change room, that is a massive, massive, massive part of the group. How, how much has Lochi helped you personally since he came in? Uh, <laughs> I think it was good. Um, yeah, I think he's, he's, he's helped me massively. I think since he's come in the day one, like the standards are just, he, for everyone, it's just risen another level and stuff. So it's been good, really good. He's been pushing me. Like, even I haven't been playing and stuff, I've just been teaching me little things and that, which has made a massive difference. And that game against Wrexham could have gone... Any better, really. You've made your league debut and kept a clean sheet. You must have been pretty pleased with that. Yeah, no, it was a good game. I think, as a whole, we defended very, very well. I think, especially the two centre-backs, Prezi and Dwight, absolute monsters at the back that game as well. So, done really well there. And is it only a tinge of disappointment that you've made your debut and it wasn't, you weren't able to make that debut in front of our fans, who, but they have seen you on yeah. the stream? Yeah, I think just a bit of disappointment, but... Yeah, hopefully the fans can be back soon because I think you can see on the players as well that we are missing them a lot and it makes a massive difference when they're around. So be hopefully not too long now until they're back. And just lastly, Eamon, you've had that two games behind you. Um, just how much of, of a, is that going to aid your development going forward? Yeah, I think it's going to help a lot. I think now it's just about keeping my head down and just training well, um, learning more, floaty, training better, stuff like that. So... Just not rushing, not thinking I need to play every game and stuff. Just keep developing and then see what happens at the end of the season. The Bees have had good fortunes on Tuesday night matches in the Vanarama National League so far this season. Let's look back to our last home Tuesday night fixture as we took on Weymouth here at the Hive London.
goalkeeper coach Reese Evans joined up with Peter Beadle and Steve Jenkins over the summer in the build-up to the 2020-21 campaign. Last week, we sat down with Reese to talk to him about what it's like working with our goalkeepers. Reese, I guess, first of all, welcome to Barnet. It's our first time being able to sit down and have a yeah. chat with you. You must be pleased to link up with Beads and Jenks again. Yeah, um, I played with Jenks, you know, uh, a long time ago now and obviously played briefly under them uh, in my last playing season. So um, I, I spent a large portion of that season injured, unfortunately, and uh, that was when I think Beads first saw uh, my coaching uh, credentials, should we say, because as I was reha rehabbing, I was helping the young goalkeepers at uh, Hereford and um, um, they sort of went on to do quite well, you know, and that was where I think my relationship with, with the manager sort of started as such. And then uh, when Hereford reformed, he asked me to uh, to come on board as well, you know, so I think there's a lot of trust there. He trusts me, I trust him, obviously, you know, I think that obviously is a good basis to start with. When you look at the goalkeepers we have here, you've got young James, Callan, uh, Eamon, and then of course, Scott Loach, who's yep. a very experienced goalkeeper. What's it like working with those three? Yeah, great, brilliant, it's been fantastic. I think, you know, obviously I had to go in and, and um, build the relationships, get them to sort of obviously trust me as well. Um, and I see a lot of, I see a lot of similarities myself with, with Scott, you know, and we've, talk, we've talked about it a fair bit, you know, whereas he's at an age where I ended up at his age at a conference club, and probably not where he probably wants to, not where he envisages himself being perhaps, you know, so, um, I said, look, you know, what do you want to do? Where, where do you want to go? You know, and um, we talked about that, and and I said, look, I'm just going to push you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you out your comfort zone. Probably we haven't been pushed for a little while. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm up for it. You know, and they've all em embraced me and embraced what I've tried to do. And I think we've got a good um, work ethic. I think we've got a good atmosphere. You know, and it's it's serious when it needs to be serious, but we'll have a we'll have a laugh at the same time when it's appropriate. You know, so. We're talking, I was talking to Lochi the other day and he says aben has got plenty of credentials to go on and be a top keeper. And those two games he's played recently wouldn't have done him any harm. No, I, I think, again, speaking to Eamon and, and um, you know, I said to him, look, you know, when I first walked in the club, you wouldn't have envisaged where you are now. You know, you're now gone from a period where you've probably raised your credentials within the team, within the group probably on the wider side of things from the club and, and, and the fans as well, now more aware of who he is. And I can, you know, absolutely rest assured he has worked very, very hard and he deserved his opportunity. And I think he, we were all really pleased that he took the opportunity because now, you know, like I said to him, I need him to push Lochi and um, Lochi needs to be aware of that. I think Lochi is aware of that, obviously, naturally. Um, and then obviously James beneath Eamon needs to push Eamon, you know. So, um, no, I... I Eamon's done great, you know, and I think that he's very, very young, although he's massive, you know, he's lost a lot of weight, he's really toned up, I've, I've pushed him within an inch of his, of his of his life, you know, he's really embraced that, so he's got my respect 100%, you know, but again, and what I've said to the guys, you know, I, I approach the way I coach, the way I wish I'd been coached, you know, and I wish I'd been pushed more at times, and that's a regret of mine, and we, we talked about it this morning, and I said, you know, Whatever happens for Eamon this season, you know, if he can look himself in the mirror that he's done everything he can and he's embraced that, you know, so yeah, he needs to get in the ice bath after training because that is what he should do, you know. I think he's he's that penny has dropped for him, you know, and, and all respect to him for it. Young James is very obviously at the start of his career in many ways, but it doesn't do him any harm either training with a goalkeeper like no, Scott. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and again, the same for James, you know, he's got his challenges and his. In his things he needs to work on like any any professional athlete has you know but um we're working with james at the moment on a couple of specific areas more physically than they are necessarily technical um and again james hasn't really had a goalkeeper coach as such you know in his in his short career or short life up to this point you know so he's today for me was a real stepping stone for him he's sort of seen as though he's, he's moved on a level mature a little bit grasps what we're trying to do so they all bounce off each other really well you know and um I think everybody fully knows what to expect when, when we're putting a session on, you know, which is great. So I don't need to drive it from that point of view. It's just the demands of the quality and, and everything else that we need. Looking at it as a, as a whole, how would you assess the club's start of the season? It was a good cup win against Burton last week. Yeah. And we seem to be keeping a few more clean sheets as well. Yeah, I and mean, obviously that, that, that was a massive factor in the first couple of games and obviously concerning for, for, for everybody, you know, but I think... And it's difficult, isn't it? Because you don't want to sort of make excuses or any kind of that. But I think what we as a management team walked into, and especially Beads and Jenks before I, I came in, was 
you know, the players from previous, the new players, and then finding a way to make that gel, you know, which is never easy. And you can never, you can never plan for that. That's that's hopefully um, something that just clicks, you know. So I think uh, the game on Sunday was a massive watershed. I think you know because you, I think it bonded a lot of people. And I think you know that backs to the wall type um, situation that, that we found ourselves in was a was a positive, you know. And I think those baby steps are now starting to sort of see the fruits of the labour, aren't they? You know, so I, I, I've, I'm certainly excited to be on board. I think hopefully, you know, although people can't come into the games at the moment from a remote point of view, hopefully they're seeing that progression and the club development because, you know, certainly it's something I've noticed um, when I'm here, so. It's time to look back on some previous action as we beat Burton Albion in the Emirates FA Cup first round tie. The win over the Brewers has set up a cracking second round tie against MK Dons, which will take place next Sunday. Ben and Williams. Now for Trasso. Touch back. Decent effort. Oh, it's a wonderful goal from Wesley Fonguk. Just 10 minutes gone and the National League side ahead. Wallace. Slides it through, it's a decent ball to Ennis who gets it across. And it's a good save from Loach. More pressure from Burton Albion have had plenty of the ball. Away by Taylor. And now Hooper. He's got him behind again. A good chance to double the lead here for Barnett. And O'Hara does really well. That's a poor header. And that's a poor decision as well from Matt Preston. It's a red card. And Barnett are down to 10. Good turn and shot off the crossbar. So unlucky there, Ennis. Still it's not away. And Daniel is blocked. Swinging corner, free header off the line. Hughes with the chance. Here's Vernon. It's been lively since coming on, Vernon. Ooh, driven back across the penalty area. What a chance for Hemmings. What a miss. Been hanging on a bit here, Barnett, with their 10 men. Leave one side, come again here. Vernon goes for goal. Loach did well. Vernon again. And it's just not Burton's afternoon. We caught up with new man Anthony Wordsworth last week. The central midfielder joins the Bees with significant experience across both League One and the Championship. After completing the deal, we caught up with him to see what his aspirations were for his time with Barnet. Anthony, welcome to Barnet. Just tell us a bit about how the move come about because you join us with a wealth of experience on the Football League. Yeah, I've um, been training by myself a lot um, after having a difficult season last season with injuries. Um, I've been coming to train the last couple of days with, with a view to sign in. Um, been really impressed by the team, the facilities and the club as a whole. Uh, Peter will be delighted to have uh, another man on board. What conversations have you had with him and how did he affect the move? Um, yeah, he was obviously first of all getting me down to show me around the place and like I said, really impressed with training, um, more so the standard of players that are here, um, really good bunch, which, which I've been impressed with um, and like I said, repeat what I just said about the facilities, the stadium, the ground, the pitch, um, I think it's got, it's got potential to, to get promoted. The boys you would have met for the first couple of days, how impressed have you been with the players here? Really impressed. I mean, I know quite a lot of them from over the years, um, but training's been sharp. Um, some really good young players here, that I think, and that I've been impressed with um, in training. And yeah, I think the, I think the team really do have a good chance of, of doing something special this season. You've played plenty of games at League One level and, and Championship level. Other than that kind of experience, what can you see and you bring to this Barnet team? Um, I think throughout my career, I've been a goal-scoring midfielder. Um, my, my job recently at Wimbledon was a little bit different where I've been more more defensive so I'd like to think I can mix it up um, and also like you said with leadership uh, I've captained a couple of clubs so I'd like to think I can bring some, some leadership to the group um, and add to what we've already got here. 
on the whole, what will be your main targets? Because I was just looking, you haven't actually been able to play since February with the whole lockdown. So you must be looking forward to getting back out on the pitch first and foremost. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been frustrating for myself. I've uh, been missing playing games and also miss being in the football environment. Um, it's a lively bunch here, to, to, to say the least. Uh, it's been pretty enjoyable so far. And just lastly, it's unfortunate that our fans won't be able to see you when you do make your debut, but I assume you'll be looking forward to playing for them as and when the time is right. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a shame that there are no fans are allowed in at the moment. But looking at the facilities here, the stadium, um, it'd be nice to see them all back soon and, and hopefully I can impress them. That's all we have time for on our Live from the High pre-match show. The Bees will now take on Kings in Town this evening at the High of London, looking to return to winning ways. We look forward to seeing you on the live stream a little bit before kickoff at 7.45. Yeah,